You can see that in the 1970s, men ate about 2,500 calories, women 1,500 calories, and we're going to see what happens with time. And for the next five years or so, up to 1976, nothing changes. But why would it? Because the dietary guidelines hadn't happened. Now the dietary guidelines come out in 1977, and Americans, because they're clever and they do what they're told to do, they increase the amount of calories from carbohydrates from just over a thousand to a little bit more. So this, this total bar is how much carbohydrates being eaten, and the same for women, and then it stayed pretty much the same up to 2000. But look what happened when people started eating more carbohydrates, the energy consumption went up. And that's, in my view, because of carbohydrate-induced hyperphagia. You eat more when you eat carbohydrates. And the evidence is in the literature that carbohydrates make you hungry. So, and people knew this, and they were warned that if you tell people to eat carbohydrates, they're gonna get fat, and so, so that's what happened. And this is what's changed with time. Carbohydrates gone up 30%. In con corn consumption, 100% increase. Wheat, 21%. Vegetable oils, 89%. White meat, chicken, 139%, and sugar, 25%. So that's what happened in the American diet associated with the increase in obesity. So you, you might say that vegetable oils, or corn or vegetable oils, have got a factor that we need to consider as well. But the carbohydrates has gone up substantially. And then if we look at the obesity rates, you can see they've just gone through the roof, and they start in 1977. So that's when the dietary guidelines are introduced and the obesity epidemic begins immediately thereafter. And this is not gonna change unless someone changes the eating behaviors of the popu populations. It's the diet liver heart hypothesis. When you talk diet heart hypothesis, you're talking fat, and that's wrong. When you're talking diet liver heart hypothesis, you're talking carbohydrate, and that's correct. So the future of understanding of how atherogenic dyslipidemia arises will come from the work of hepatologists who understand insulin resistance and high carbohydrate diets, not from cardiologists. It's a critical point. To protect your heart and arteries, it's best to consult a hepatologist, not a cardiologist. <laughs>